I believe. Um, Chairman. Mr. Oh, Peter. Thank you. William Seal. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I feel like we need to be saying something like we've taken this giant leap <laughs> forward. <laughs> um, because when you look at the purpose of this act, the first part is facilitate the development of space industry and provide for its safe and secure operation. What a wonderful, fresh idea that is for, for New Zealand. It's an idea that we need to, to get behind and support. And, and I do, and I do acknowledge that this isn't something that has suddenly arrived at our doorstep overnight. This is something that has, over the years, 2007, right up till now, this is something that we really should be celebrating because we've sort of punched that, um, that skyline. We're now competing with the rest of the world in terms of this new space industry. Um, you know, wh what do they say with Star Trek movies? We're going to go to where no man has ever gone before. And literally, this company here is the first of its kind. Um, and so, to facilitate the development of the space industry, it, <laughs> that's right, is something that we need to be celebrating. Because it also sends a very clear message about the changing work environment that we will now have. Because in, in developing the space industry, we'll have astronauts, little kids from Māngere can start dreaming about becoming astronauts, New Zealand or Kiwi astronauts. We can now start talking about young people out of South Auckland becoming scientists to help develop <laughs> this industry. We can talk about a whole range of new jobs and industry related to the development of the space industry that we can get our young people to start dreaming and visualising in terms of going forward to the future. The second part of the, uh, the purpose clause, implement certain international obligations of New Zealand relating to space activities and space technology. Uh, I note that this is a partnership between New Zealand and the USA. And I have my concerns about this because, yes, we do have uh, obligations in terms of the international um, arena, but I, I, I wonder why the partnership with the USA, given all that has occurred, uh, be, the relationship between New Zealand and the USA, how we differ in terms of our anti-nuclear stance, the GCSB and all the spying that has taken place of recent causes me some concern. And I, and I don't know, sir, um, in terms of how deep are we in in ensuring that everybody's quite clear about what those obligations are and what that means, not just presently, but in terms of going forward into the future. It then goes on about limiting the implementation of obligations in the Outer Space Treaty. I didn't realise there was an Outer Space Treaty. But it makes sense that there needs to be one because the fact of the matter is if we're shooting up skyrockets up in the sky and, and, and those rockets are releasing debris and whatnot, where do they end up with? Sure, some of it will burn before it reaches our atmosphere if they've gone up high enough. But if they just put it up above here somewhere, where does it fall? How do we know that it will fall into the ocean? <laughs> How do we not know it will fall into space where it's not going to fall on a cow or a few sheep or, or real people? And, and that is, is a concern. And I'm not sure whether this legislation, in fact, gives confidence to the rest of the country about what we are, are doing there, sir. Establishing military bases, installation or fortification on celestial bodies. What does that mean? What, what, what celestial bodies are we talking about? Are we talking about angels? Are we arming the angels to become military bases? Um, it, look, it may be funny, but the reality is this is the first time that New Zealand is embarking on developing a space station. We are beginning to send skyrockets into the wide, wide space. And, and information that is accurate, information that will help um, people 
understand and, and get around it. I understand that the local communities where this space station are pretty supportive. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Well, Peter, I understand that the local communities where this space station is based are very supportive of it. And I can see those local communities sort of setting up little tourism platforms and saying, come in, watch space, give us $50 or something, stand for an hour, maybe a week before the next <laughs> rocket goes up. But the reality is, sir, this, the point I'm making, this is new space that we're entering in. This is new ground that we're going to cover. And it works perfectly with what the Labour Party have been talking about uh, in terms of the works environment is changing, in terms of the potential for this kind of industry to start bringing forward some of the career pathways that many of our young people can be involved with. I see that um, testing any types of weapons, that concerns me. What sort of weapons are we doing? We do not have the kind of, of, of military base that the states have. That concerns me. Are we being used by the, by the US of A to be sort of a secondary military base? Is that what their intentions are? Because from where I stand, it is certainly not the intention of New Zealand, nor should it be, to use this space uh, station for the purposes of creating weapons that can land and kill somebody else or somewhere else. The intent, I would think, is to develop an industry that can, um, can explore, find new life, promote an industry where we can learn about how to protect this world, which we, in many ways, in other major countries, uh, are, are polluting. Um, manage any potential actual liability that may arise from the space industry. Good question. What potential conflicts are we liable for in setting up the space station? Um, I don't envision any, but surely our, our ministry officials would be able to table at some stage. Maybe the minister would like to answer that. What potential conflicts? I mean, you put that there in clause for purpose. What are we anticipating that we would end up getting ourselves in? Preserve New Zealand's national security and national interest, great purpose, great purpose. And that would mean that we need to have full control of our space station. And though we are partnering with the USA, good on them, and NASA is supposed to have this wonderful reputation, but notwithstanding that, we need to have full control. And that means that this government and future governments needs to be investing and supporting the innovation of this kind of industry. Because I, my point is, from where I stand, this sort of investment, this innovation, is about creating new jobs, new jobs that our young people can, can aspire for. And like I said, I feel like we should be saying something that we're going to punch the sky there, reach new horizons, fresh ideas is what's required. I'm glad that the government has come, although albeit at a later stage, to fund and support this, but I want to give kudos to those who have been responsible for this, their belief in it, going back to 2007, and those ministers of the Labour government then who support it and provide that, that moral encouragement, because that's what's needed to get new innovation. And so, um, in terms of that purpose statement, wonderful things, but there are questions that I would hope the Minister would take the time to respond to. Fletcher Tabito. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh,